Welcome back to WCCF Tech TV everyone, it's Keith once again and today we're going to be talking about DXR on GTX. See up until recently, which was just a few days ago at the time of this video, you've only been able to run DXR functions, so real-time ray tracing, uh, reflection, shadows, global illumination, ambient occlusion, all those things in the more modern games on the RTX cards. But it, you haven't required an RTX card, it just hasn't been available for you to run it on a GeForce card, or a GTX card rather. So so NVIDIA has released the driver that will allow you to run DXR functions on your GeForce cards or GeForce GTX cards. So what we're looking at this day is today in this video is a brief snapshot of the type of performance that you can expect on a GTX card running DXR functions. So how much benefit are those RT cores in reality? And that's kind of what we're going to take a look at in these results because we're going to take a look using the RTX 2060. So the idea here is this is your entry level RTX card. It is the most basic version and we're going to compare it to last generation's uh, upper end of the echelon, the GTX 1080. I know there's going to be plenty of people out there mad that I don't have a 1080 Ti, but if you've been following the channel, you'll know that I don't have one. I just don't have one, sorry. And then we're going to take a look at another GTX card in the form of GTX Touring. So with the 1660, don't have the 1660 Ti, we're just looking at the 1660. Now these are not a direct comparison. These are just an idea of what different architectures perform like across these various games. So we're running it on our Core i9-9900K test bench, clocked at 5 gigahertz with 16 gigs of DDR4-3200 on the Z370 Classified K by EVGA. And well, with all that out of the way, let's jump into the benchmarks. We're gonna go ahead and kick things off with Port Royal. So this is featuring ray traced reflections and ray traced shadows. And in this uh, graph that we're gonna put up right now, you'll see the 2060 is ooh, way out in the lead. And the smaller number is the frame rates. Now, admittedly 17.58 frame rates or FPS is not a very enjoyable experience, but this is a straight up benchmark and that's just kind of how those work. But let's jump into actual gaming titles and see how things fare. So we ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at 1080p high settings or high preset rather with ray trace shadows set to medium and shadows is all this game features. So ray trace shadows, it does feature DLSS, but we did not test DLSS in any of these titles. You can see here that the 2060 came in significantly ahead ish but the 1080 put up a good showing in this title being only slightly behind the 2060 at 1080p and the gtx 1660 showed itself to be um, surprisingly capable of this game with ray trace shadows on this now this ray trace shadows at uh, medium is the lowest setting so that's kind of how we did the rest of these tests so if you notice in this one, we did the DXR at the lowest available setting. That's kind of how we tested all of these whenever that option presented itself. Give us more of a like uh, look at what somebody may actually be willing to try to run. So moving on to Battlefield 5. So Battlefield 5 run at 1080p with the high preset and DXR set to low. So DXR in this one is reflections only. We see here that the 2060 pulled out just over 60 FPS while the GTX 1080, well, we were looking at about 45 FPS average and then 40 for the GTX 1660. Now you could mess with the resolution scaling to adjust that if you wanted to, whereas you know something like the G RTX 2060 gets the benefit of using uh, DLSS instead of resolution scaling to boost those frames if you wanted to. Moving things into Metro Exodus 1080p with the high preset, which had tessellation off and uh, Advanced Physics was off, but we ran the global illumination and any ambient occlusion ray tracing features at high settings. You got high and ultra, so we ran it at high here. And the RTX 2060 ran phenomenally here on this setting. Uh, quite a bit of dips, but moving down to the GTX series and you see they take a massive pummel from Metro Exodus. Now, what we understand is the global illumination is one of the harder things to run. And when it comes to ray tracing settings, so it makes sense that they would be hit that hard. Now, moving things into Justice, which is a on Rails benchmark here, so it's more of a demo, but it uses ray, ray trace reflections and ray trace shadows, so a combination thereof. And we see in the results here, when you start combining these things, the GTX cards simply can't keep up. It 
renders it pretty abysmal. So, you know, but interestingly enough here is the Turing GTX cards actually fare better when multiple uh, instances of ray tracing are in use. Now, none of the, neither one of these are exactly enjoyable, but just shows you where things are. Now, moving into Atomic Heart, we finally have a way to take a look at Atomic Heart and the expected performance that we can get from it. And we see here, it's gonna be a booger bear run, and the RTX 2060 still is pulling less than 60 FPS at 47 on average with 20.1% lows, whereas with the GTX cards, it's simply unacceptable. There's no way you would have to, just like with Justice, you're gonna have to pick your poison there. You want ray, 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 trace, ray traced reflections or ray traced shadows if I can get those out. But again, this is not an end all. This is more just a snapshot of what type of performance that you can expect. You can expect the 1080 Ti to do a little better than the 1080 and the 1070 to do a little worse. And same thing for the GTX 1660 Ti, it's gonna do better. And obviously all of the 20 series is gonna do better overall than that. But it is really cool that it gives you the option now to at least take a look at it and see for yourself if you're already running a GTX Pascal series GPU that is a 1060, six gigabytes or higher, requires six gigabytes of DD memory. I don't wanna say DDR5, DDR6, but six gigabytes of VRAM. And well, I don't know, it's up to you. Turn it on if you want to, don't if you don't. So this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Love to hear your thoughts on this subject down in the comment section below. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you and the next one.